Hello there. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Well, I have some exciting info from you guys for you guys. Some really exciting stuff. It took me, a, I can see myself. That's why I'm messing with my hair. <laughs> it takes me, it took me a little bit longer uh, than usual to um, prepare for this video because it is so good. <laughs> G. Okay? OMG. That's all I can say is OMG for now. You guys, by the time this video is over, you guys are going to be holding your mouths going, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So, um, I think I'm going to let you watch the video first. It's an interview that I did. And I'd like to thank Jamal Chase for um, for uh, hooking us up, even though I had taken a picture with this person a few years ago. But anyway, uh, before I do it, I wanna do a little bit of housekeeping. I'd like to thank the fans who have sent me gifts. Oh my God, look at this necklace. Look how cute this is. Isn't this adorable? Yes, it is adorable. It is from Lil uh, Laya. L-I-Y-A. Thank you so, so, so much for sending this to me. And she sent a note as well. Um, and the note was pretty much, you know, that we should be lovers and not fighters. I'm ad-libbing and paraphrasing a bit, but that's what she pretty much meant. So in this right here, you see that? It says, to die would be an awfully big adventure. Peter Pan. And remember when Michael told the crew to this is it, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's a great adventure, just a great adventure. Well, this has been a nine year adventure. Oh my God. And we are still getting information, still getting clues, still finding out everything that he did to prepare for this death hoax. Now we have proof that the death hoax goes back at least to 1994, but I think it's been in Michael's head since Elvis died in 1977. And then the, is the Elvis Alive book came out in the early 80s or mid 80s. Um, I can't remember. No, 88. It came out in 88 because there was 11 years difference, I think, almost to the day of Michael Jackson's death announcement. And I think that when Elvis, you know, was announced dead and there was a rumor that he could have faked it, I'm wondering if Michael said, one day I'm going to fake my death because he started doing a lot of things with, with the living dead, right? Thriller was first named Starlight. Um, and Thriller is about the living dead with werewolves who are the living dead. Zombies are the living dead. Then Michael went on with Ghost, the living dead. And even in Moonwalker, uh, he's thought to have died and he comes back. So this has been a theme of his. So it's been in his mind for a long time. So you guys must watch the Alive Trilogy. Uh, there it is. The Alive Trilogy of Michael Jackson Doc. See that right there? You gotta watch it for real, for real, for real. If you haven't watched it, please order it on Amazon. I'm not kidding, okay? So that you won't be lost when I'm giving all these clues because if you're just watching for the first time, you're like, what? Oh, she crazy, she delusional. She's, you know, needs to be in the mental hospital. Uh-uh. Just the genius of Michael Jackson is so genius that it is insane. His genius is insane. But, uh, and I'm just saying it like, you know how, you, you bad. You know, kind of like so, anyway guys, so first, before I, oh, let me, let me go ahead, I wanna do some more stuff. Okay, let me turn the camera around, oh, here we go. Oh, look, I turned it around really good this time. And you know why? I got the air conditioning on. I also have on the uh, a fan near me so that the phone doesn't get too hot. So these are gifts that I received from fans. And I don't want to um, say thank you to everybody at the same time. So I want to, so I'll remember that each 
uh, one, uh, my next alive, I will feature another gift that I got from another fan. And, um, and then whoever sent this pink one, honey, I, your writing is beautiful, but I don't know, um, I can't read your writing of who you are. So please, uh, send me a note and let me know it's you that sent that one. And, uh, Jody, thank you so much. And, uh, other fans too. I won't get into it. Somebody even sent something for Ruby. At least I think it's for Ruby. Anyway, thank you so, so much. And I will highlight your gifts um, in, in, um, in another, uh, another live and then another live and then another live, and then I'll be caught up. Okay. But thank you guys so, so, so much for sending gifts. I surely appreciate it, especially with all the hate that I get sometimes. Right. So anyway, here we go. Okay. So see this person here. His name is John John Harrell. He's from the group Troop. So I interviewed him and I had lunch with him. Uh, I think it was on Tuesday that I had lunch with him. And so we did a small interview that I want to. It's six minutes, but believe me, after this interview, I got a bombshell to drop. Okay, so here's the interview and I thank him so much. Here I am at lunch with the world famous John John Harrell of the famous group Troop who sung the Michael Jackson Jackson 5 hit, All I Do Is Think Of You. He reminds me of somebody. But anyway, go ahead. So what is your history with Michael Jackson? Hello everybody, first of all, the world Michael was actually meeting him uh, for the first time uh, back in 1989 at Gardner Elementary School. Uh, they put the auditorium in his name on the outside of the auditorium. And that was, you know, I got a chance to hear him meet Michael. And, and he talked to me, we had birds, he, he, he spoke to me, and he told me that. Uh, really admired the group and the family loved the group. And at that time, you know, the album was recorded, the Attitude album was recorded, but um, it wasn't released, so I didn't want to let him know that when we had recorded this song, I was just thinking, I wanted to be a surprise. And um, I remember doing a tour with MC Hammer, and uh, we got to Atlanta, Georgia, and Jermaine was there. Jermaine had walked into our dressing room and he was like, one of you guys met my brother. So he, he said, it was you. John John, it was you. And I said, yeah, I met him uh, at Garden Elementary School. He said, yeah, he put his name in the auditorium. And, and he talked to us. He talked to the whole group. He gave, a, he gave everybody a hug. And he gave me this real long hug and he whispered in my ear. And he said something about my, my, my singing, about how much it moved and, and said that my voice was very vibrant. And he said, I, he, he, his words were, man, you sing your ass off. And that's... That so Michael cursed? Uh, Jermaine had cursed, cursed to me. Oh, that was Jermaine who said that. Yeah, that, yeah, right. yes, that yeah. was Jermaine, because Jermaine was saying it, how, uh, how one of us had met his brother, Michael, and it, it happened to be me. So uh, that was kind of like my... Um, reaction of, of meeting Michael, and then after that, for the facility, being able to meet everybody else in the family, um, meeting Papa Joe, Mom, and I, I think at one time, it, the very last person who I had to meet at that time was Marlon, who a lot of people say kind of like now, I'm like, I take a Marlon a little bit, I take it, I love it. Um, um, they were performing at the Greek Theater, and I remember uh, being able to go inside their dressing room, but they started singing to me a cappella. They started singing all I do is think of Oh my God! My eyes, and just to hear those brothers to, sing, to hear them sing that song wow. was just mind blowing to me. It sounded amazing. Wow. I was just so stunned and so shocked that they started singing. I, I could all I could do was just stand there and just listen to what they were singing. I wanted to sing with them, you know, but they were singing to me, and I thought it was just an amazing. Amazing, uh, a monument for me. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know Peter, right? Yeah, I know Peter. You and Peter, yeah. good friends. Yeah, we talk. Yeah, we, you we talk. 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 He admires cool you dude. so much. Cool dude, really cool dude. Uh huh. Yeah. Does he remind you of Michael? 
um, just hearing his voice, it's, it's amazing. Um, wow. Vocal tones, I mean, when you speak to Peter, it sounds like a lot like... Okay, like really it does. Yeah, it does. Could you yeah. put on these glasses for a second? Let me see you with those glasses. I know they're dirty. Oh my god. Oh my god. And pearl land for it. Uh, your head up, up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So is there anything you want to say to Michael fans? My battery already said it's gonna cut off in a minute. So all the Michael fans out there. Don't ever stop loving me. He'll love you from wherever he is. Uh, he's Michael. He's the king. He'll always be the king. Um, keep on loving him. Keep on playing his music. Uh, trust me when I tell you that, that he hears it. He hears it. You know, I mean, everyone, everyone can hear whatever what's from the heart. So keep on supporting him and supporting his family and everybody who's a part of the Jackson family, all of the fans. Did Peter ever have a prediction? A prediction? Yeah, tell it real quick because uh, the battery's gonna die. Did he ever predict never, something in your life? We, we, you know what, we had a conversation and, and he told me, he said, you know what, I found out that you were uh, getting ready to go pay tribute, you know, to, you know, to the, you know, to the fellas, to the brothers. The Jackson said, brothers? Yeah, and uh, he said, you're getting ready to go to Nashville, Tennessee, and it kind of dawned on me that he would, you know, say something like that, you know. I mean, I didn't really say anything to anybody, you know, not at that time. And I was just giving the news about it. So I was like, I'm not going to say anything. But Peter he, knew. He knew about it. So that was kind of like, wow, mind blowing. It is, it is mind blowing. Yeah. All right, John John. So thank you so much. I've enjoyed lunch with you. Hold on, guys. So, wait, wait. Wait a minute, how am I doing? Where are we? What am I doing wrong? Oh, we got to turn it around. We just got to turn it around. Okay, this is me. Hi. Hi, Jackson fans. I'm with John John. See you guys later. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera around. While I prepare for the next, ah! Okay, let me turn them and let me reduce this. Okay. Oh gosh, here I am. I am such a dean bad. I swear. Okay, so you guys have to just, you know, I'm trying to edit, do a video, and all that at the same time. Okay. So you guys have to forgive me. Okay. Have a little bit of patience for me. Okay. So that's a Facebook page. Um, it's on. It's on there. Okay. So here I am. Okay. So that is John John, okay? And um, throughout the years, I have seen Peter like pay attention to John John, you know, so much. So he must be somebody important in, in Peter's life because Peter always wishes him a happy birthday and which his birthday is the day after mine. And his girl's birthday is the same day as my birthday. And I just always thought, you know, dang, you know, he likes John John, you know, Peter likes John John. And I, I, I didn't ever get the connection, right? And I'm looking for the next shot, right? So when I saw John John, so when I saw John John, I'm gonna turn my camera around, at the Jackson, at the Jackson uh, concert in Palm Desert a few years ago that I went with my sister, I was like, oh my God, I gotta take a picture with John John, right? And I thought maybe it was a setup, but apparently it was, and it was just a coincidence. So anyway, so here's my picture with John John at the Jackson concert a few years ago. I'm gonna turn the camera around. So there's my picture. Oh, wasn't that cute? Maybe I should wear my hair like that again. <laughs> it's so nice. Okay. Uh, so that's me and John John in person, right? Right? That's me and John John in person. So um, anyway, so I've always paid attention. I always wanted to know, why does Peter pay so much attention to John John, right? So uh, yesterday when I was interviewing him, I swear to you, it dawned on me. 
it dawned on me. Where is it? Oh my God. Oh my God. Where is that picture? Oh my goodness. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here it is right here. Okay. Here it is right here. Oh my God, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Do you guys see the similarities? That's Bobby Anderson. That's John John. That's Bobby Anderson. That's John John. And if you guys have watched a live three, you will know that Michael gets mask made of people that already exist because he has to give the mask maker something. He has to give them some kind of picture, right? He has to give him, you know, something to the mask is like, I can't create a face. Give me something. So we saw that with Dave Dave. We saw that with um, Miss Jane Pittman. Right, because um, he had he drew a picture of Miss Jane Pittman on the Dinah Shore show. It's in a live three. Uh, it's in some alive threes because I found it. Micheline James, thank you, sent it to me um, afterwards. So some of them have, some of them are edited with it in there, and some of them are edited with it out. I think for sure. Uh, it's in the Alive 3 that's on Vimeo. Maybe not in the uh, DVDs, but also member Sheriff Strider with Emmett, Sh Emmett Till is the mayor of Ghost. So you guys got to watch Alive 3 so you understand. So here, here, I think Michael took the face of John John and made the Bobby Anderson mask. It's just so similar. Now, of course, he has to be overweight because the face has to be bigger, okay, for Michael's face to fit underneath. So the mask always has to be bigger. But I was just like, oh, my God, look at that. Look at that. When I was sitting across from John John, I said to myself, oh, my God, you look just like Bobby Anderson. Yes, this is the bombshell. Yes. And he was like, oh, my God. He said, that's so funny. He said yesterday, just yesterday, he was talking to Jamal Chase, who had um, who had uh, uh, contacted me and asked me to get in touch with John John. He said, Jamal just mentioned that to him yesterday. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is where the Bobby Anderson face and the entire family came from. It came from John John's face. It came from John John's face. Look at that, guys. It came from John John's face. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's oh, my God. Oh my God, right? So anyway, I just couldn't wait to tell you guys, but I had to prepare so much. And then when um, also, uh, let me show you this. Let me show you, this is all Peter. Peter has emailed John John and, 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 and look, Peter Madani, John John, 2000 and uh, just July, just a few days ago. Um, John John has a great song called I Want to Fly Away. It's a fantastic song. I want you guys to go ahead and, and uh, listen to it. But look, all the way back to like 2014, I think. And then Peter used to delete all his posts, right? He used to delete all his posts. And then that's John B., who I love John B., you know. Um, he's a singer. And then look at this. Look at all these these John John posts that Peter had. So John John stuck out for a certain reason and John John didn't understand it either. You know, he didn't understand it either. Look at all these posts that Peter did to John John. And John John, I think we figured out. See, there's John John with Marlon. He said he thinks he looks like Marlon and maybe that's what kind of reminded him of Marlon, maybe, you know, the original Marlon. Okay. Um, and there's John, John, and here he is. Here he is right here. This is an, oh my God. Wow. This is an, oh my God. Wow. Okay. It's just amazing. Okay. And here's Peter Madani. Here is, no, AKA Bobby Anderson. Look, look. And look, interest look. can be utilized. People think that's not a well, mask. It is. The it's the best mask the that money can buy. It is the best mask that money can buy. Okay? The best mask that money can buy. Do you guys hear me? 
Do you hear me? This is the best mask that money can buy. The best mask that money can buy. Michael would, Michael would make these masks do whatever they need to do. He can do it. You see movie magic all the time. You can make people into monsters and make their nostrils move, make their lips move. You can, you can make their eyebrows move. You can color their eyeballs. You can color. We've seen it in movies. So don't think it's not possible. Michael will spend whatever money has to be spent. And nobody, nobody revealed, uh, and look, always overweight. Always, okay? Because if you're going to make the face bigger, you got to make the body bigger to match. So if there's a mask that Michael is wearing, he can't have that little scrawny body underneath there because it looks awkward. So he has to, just like with the mayor and, um, uh, um, and other fat people that wear fat suits, like in the clumps. The reason why the clumps were all overweight in which Rick Baker, in which Rick Baker, let me go back to this, hold on. Okay, that's me and John John. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to this one. Okay, in which uh, uh, Rick Baker, let me go back to this one. Okay, to where, uh, and this was years ago he had this match, uh, mass made. Okay, it had to be more than nine years ago. Okay, now Rick Baker, he did the mask and the makeup for Michael's Thriller, turned him into a werewolf and a ghost, go, and, and a werewolf and a zombie, and he did the makeup for Ghost, and he also did the makeup for Miss Jane Pittman. So why, so he would go back to Rick Baker and he would say, no, if you can make it look like this, you can make it look better. I want the best mask that money can buy, money can make. Yes. And I believe that Bobby Anderson's face is fuller because they had to put make, in, make it big enough that it can fit over Michael's face. And because there's no way that Bobby Anderson from South Carolina, to which I proved to you in the last video, that the estate has been doing something in South Carolina, at least, till, at least back from 2009, okay? Bobby Anderson is supposed to be from South Carolina, the estate does business in South Carolina. They pay taxes to the state of revenue of South Carolina. So I believe that it all matches, okay? This Bobby Anderson's face is probably John John 10 or 15 years ago because Michael was planning on faking his death back in 2001. You got to watch Alive 2 during the Invincible era, but something really, 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 really huge happened that made him postpone that death hoax. So we don't know how long he's had this mask and nobody exposed Bobby Anderson, but Peter Madani. He's the one exposed it, some cousin or something. And I don't know, and I researched it and it had to do with, I, you know, I don't want to get into a death because it gets so confusing, but believe you me, I have figured it out. I have figured it out. The cousin said, I got to ask my grandmama if we got a cousin named Bobby Anderson. Okay. And then the clumps, you just make a whole family like, like Rick Baker did. He did it for the clumps. And another thing is the picture that Bobby Anderson's family, it's at one event at one little girl's like open house or something. That's where the picture is. And he's supposed to have some brother or something. Michael would pay hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's fun to him. He likes pranksters. He's been dealing with masks and disguises since he was a teenager. Since he was a teenager. So Michael has the best mask that money can buy. Period. And I believe that John John, it's not his fault. Don't nobody go harassing him. But I believe that he is the blueprint. He is the mold in which Bobby Anderson derives. I'm just letting y'all know. I'm turning it around. Wow. I know. It sounds so crazy.
But what you have to do in order to understand, Michael, you have to step out of your moccasins, step out of your life, step out of your experiences and step into his. And once you put yourself in his position, what he has done is not crazy, it's not insane. It's exactly where step by step, incrementally he got there. And I explain it well in a live three. And I urge anybody that doesn't understand this and going, wait, I don't get it, I don't get it. First, you gotta know the backstory. You got to watch the Alive Trilogy. You just have to. It's mandatory in order for you to understand this stuff. Now, you guys know I'm doing the Prisoner of War, so you know I take whatever revenues, which I am nowhere near profit, trust me, okay? But I take whatever I can, and I make more Michael product for you guys because we are Elbow Grease Productions, and we love to make documentaries and movies. So I don't have the director's cut. Hopefully tomorrow he'll call me with the director's cut. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it, and I'd like to thank all of you donors who have donated. It's not too late to have your name in the credits. So if you want to donate uh, and be in the uh, donor list in uh, Prisoner of Fame, the short film, the pilot, uh, go ahead and uh, go to PayPal. I'll leave the information down in the description. Okay, guys, I, 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 am, I am just, I, you know, here's some more pictures of, of um, uh, oh, let me turn the camera around. Here's some more pictures that I just want to show you guys of um, of John John, who was so kind. Okay, let me turn. The, oh, no. Uh, there we go. He was so kind. See, there's some more pictures of him. Look at that. Here's some more pictures of him. He's the mold. He's the mold. He's the mold. You look at the pictures that were supposed to be of, of Bobby Anderson's father. Look at that. Look at that that were supposed to be a Bobby Anderson's father? This is where he got the mold from. Oh, and there he is. There he is. That same night that I met him, he went backstage and he talked to Miss Catherine and he, and he took a picture with Jackie. The family loves him. And they made the, one of the greatest remixes of a Jackson 5 song. It was on their last album. I think it was Moving Violations uh, on Motown. And it was called All I Do Is Think Of You. And I love that song. And I wish I could play it. This is the mold. This is the Bobby Anderson mold in which he created Bobby Anderson. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. So anyway, so I'm going to play. You know what? I can't play the song because a lot of times when you play certain songs, um, uh, Facebook won't show your video. Facebook won't show your video. Okay. Facebook will, will say copyright claim and they'll won't show your video, but it's called All I Do Is Think Of You. And it was a remake and it was a number one song by Troop. And I just love that song. And the guy who sang lead, Steve, oh my God, he sounds so much like Michael. Sounds so much like Michael. So, um, okay guys, so uh, I think I went over everything. Let me make sure, let me go through my little notes here and make sure that I got everything that I was supposed to do. Yeah, I got it all. Well, guys, I'm going to turn it around. And um, I just want to tell you guys, ah, amazing, amazing stuff. Oh, my God. I just saw it. <laughs> okay. Okay. But anyway, guys, I love you guys, and I thank you guys. And, um, uh, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.